good day, good f- good morning, good good afternoon, good good friends. Uh, so uh, it's a last minute sort of impromptu talk, no slides. Uh, ultimately, uh, just wanted to introduce myself real quick. I'm Joe B, aka the Blind Hacker. Um, this talk is going to be a, kind of a soft skills for for hackers or hacking your way into the industry. Uh, this kind of got brought up while uh, so Dead Pixel is the organization that uh, I uh, I run uh, for for the community. Um, uh, by day, I'm a director at a company called On Defend. Um, so Dead Pixel, though, I we we have a booth here at uh, at B sides Delaware, B sides DE, and uh, I was sitting at my booth just chatting with the general public as they came in. And one of my uh, moments that I was talking was so compelling to. Uh, to management of B-Sides Delaware uh, to to come chat with you guys. So, uh, you know, I personally have over 15 years of experience uh, in the industry, just 10 alone in InfoSec cybersecurity. Um, you know, uh, personally, I frequently uh, crash pop prod after eating other people's code to it. So that's uh, fun times. Uh, again, more of an offensive person myself uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, but, uh, you know, again, so I was sitting at the booth and just talking about offense and how I want to see the soft skills for pen testers. And then I was like, oh, I'd love to see these soft skills from, um, the SOC of the security operations folks. And just, just these, uh, ideas on how to take those skills, apply them to getting jobs and just, uh, either getting the job, getting the interview, getting those things. And so, uh, you know, I was, I was telling them that's what dead pixel stands for dead pixel security, uh, as the founder. I literally just started it a few years ago, just kind of created a place for people to come to as I was doing my own streams, uh, such as, uh, the, you know, Danny Rando here. Uh, I just would do my own streams, but I, I, I did things a little bit more raw. I did, uh, I would do hack the box and not pre a game anything. I would do updates on my system. I would develop uh, vulnerable machines, vulnerable hub things there. So as as I started to notice that the group started to grow, I didn't, you know, it used to be about me as the Blind Hackers Discord, and I said, this is actually a group now, and I kind of just chose the name Dead Pixel Sec, A, because I am visually impaired, legally blind, and I thought it was kind of cool just to, you know, de- play on the cybersecurity technical element of a dead pixel in your monitor, but, you know, it kind of represents me, and it represents the team, and it was a name that we all kind of were able to come around. Uh, I was just talking with a few people in a booth before I got up here. We now are almost at 1,900 members uh for dead pixel security which sounds like a lot but you know we we get a lot of people in there who ask a few questions and then go away and ask a few questions and uh they come to about us later back on twitter and go hey you help me get these jobs because dead pixel specifically stands for sharing knowledge uh being kind one of our most important principles is when we notice people not being kind we go hey what's wrong what's going on uh, you know, those kind of things like because we want to help you develop the same kind of soft skills and treat Dead Pixel as if that's the place you can get a job from. Because ultimately, uh, Dead Pixel has actually provided many opportunities. I don't have the exact number of jobs that Dead Pixel itself has had the ability to offer. Um, but it's it's I mean, we've literally made chances for people giving them uh, the ability to get jobs, giving them the ability to make the connections because uh, I'm not the only director level person in there. There are actually a lot and some people don't realize that. So when you go in there, you know, don't go in there like some person who thinks they're a hotshot. Even if you are a hotshot, come in, see the see the lay of land, share your knowledge. If you share your knowledge and you're in need of a job uh, and you say, hey guys, uh, you know, I've shared a lot of knowledge. Uh, I, I need a job. Uh, people will take note of the things you've shared. Uh, so when as you as as we built this community, I realized that though so because of that and and the way that I mentioned that hey come in there and be nice, be that person, we've noticed that hackers do have that hard time with soft skills. So we occasionally run these workshops, uh, fireside chats, workshops, just resume reviews. Because uh, in Dead Pixel we do free resume reviews, we do free mock interviews. I try to sit down with as many people as I can. Um, we have many of our uh, root or core members also sit down and give uh, resume reviews and free mock interviews and just all the stuff that you really can't get elsewhere. A few places I've seen that I I, I do work with, Battleship Academy. Um, I highly suggest t- checking them out. They have a couple soft skills, how to hack your way into the interview. Use LinkedIn to get your to increase your chances of getting the interview in the first place. Because what Sometimes people don't understand is 
when you apply for a job, if you see you're communicating with, you know, Bob of HR, go find Bob of HR on LinkedIn, add Bob of HR on LinkedIn. Uh, it's little things like that that you're like, wait, why? Why though? Bob at HR doesn't care. Bob at HR now has seen your name in his inbox. Bob at HR now sees your name on his LinkedIn. Bob at HR now sees that you are taking effort to scope out the company. HR people are using LinkedIn just as much as social engineers and other people do. So taking that technical skill you have and turning it into a, uh, this hard skill you have, turning it into a soft skill is very important. And a lot of people don't understand at times what soft skills mean. So in uh, in a business sense, soft skills actually mean uh, business level soft skills are usually like emotional intelligence. Whoa, whoa, what does that mean? Well, it means being able to read a room, essentially looking at what people are doing and being able to say, now is the right time to strike. Now is the right time to do this X thing or Y thing. Um, you know, being able to look at someone and really understand what they could be going through so you can cater to it from a sales perspective, but also a soft skill perspective from a business aspect going, hey, I know it's a rough day for you. Let's sit down, let's go outside. We'll take 10 minutes together, just decompress. We're gonna come back in and we're gonna kick ass while we're at work because we, business is business and we need to get this business done. Um, team player attitude. Being a team player as a standard business soft skill is huge. Um, I kind of hate the way that we call some of our positions ICs or these individual contributors because it makes you, you're saying two words now, individual contributor as opposed to team player. While, yes, I've been an IC many times, but you also need to be a team player. You know, Jordan wasn't, uh, you know, the the GOAT. Uh, some people come fight me now for that, but Jordan didn't become the GOAT because he alone was the best. He had team. And being a team player, he allowed others to be become successful, helped others become successful. And, you know, this, that team up between him and some of the greats was, was phenomenal. And that team player attitude... Um, being able to really understand how do I become a team player, even though I am the best, I can't be the best alone. If it was me versus all other six guys, there's no way you could do it. But now you have a team and the team allows you to be the best you you can. So finding that emotional intelligence to team player leads to a, a growth mindset. Growth mindset, what does that mean? A growth mindset is the ability to sit down and go with my emotional intelligence, with my uh, this and all my other soft skills, um, how do I become better? And, and, you know, one of the best ways to become better to grow, um, openness to feedback. I, I have seen so many times come tell me even if I'm uh, messing up and, and I do as a, as a director, as a leader myself, I love to come to people and go, look, you've been doing great, but here's some faults. Here's some areas we can improve. So here's critical feedback. Now, that doesn't mean I'm angry with you. That doesn't mean this. You told me to come give you this feedback. Now, I need you to be open and willing to accept and understand the feedback because that level of understanding of the feedback helps you with that emotional response, that team player attitude, that growth mindset. How can I be better is being able to accept critical or even positive feedback and go, yes, I'm doing good. You should feel good about it. Hey, you're doing bad. Well, hey, at least they came and told me and didn't just uh, fire me or whatever. Cool. But you need to work at a place that's going to also give you capable and uh, critical feedback that is respectable at the same time. Uh, I think that's very important. Along with that adaptability, right? So if you're not at a place, you have to adapt to uh, the things that are going to make it so you can do all your other initial business level soft skills. So adaptability, the ability to flip your hat on a dime. Can you be a lead? Can you be a someone who's taking feedback? Can you be someone who's giving feedback? And again, giving feedback in a critical, positive, clear, and concise manner. So that way, as it's translated to the individual, you're giving it to them the way that they need to emotionally see it, the way they can grow, the way that they understand that this is coming from a team perspective and not that you're attacking them. And along with that comes things like active listening as a manager and even as an employee, active listening is such an important business level soft skill. Now, this, these all aren't quite the skills, active listening and even like workplace ethic, right? Are you going to work every day and giving it your best? I didn't say all, I said best because giving your all every day, leaving every ounce of energy on the field, that's not what our field is like. You can't do that. You, but when you are activated, when you are on a test, when you are on uh, incident response, when you're on those things, that's where you can leave it all on the field. And that's cool. 
but every day your work ethic just needs to be, did I give today my best? I used to wake up every morning and get ready to commute to uh, DC, hour, hour and 45 minutes each direction. I'd wake up, you know, like, hey, honey, I'm going to work. You know, kiss my wife and say, say, have a good day at work. And I always just used to say, I'll give it my best. And honestly, I at first I just started saying it, but eventually it became a mindset. And, and days that I would forget to say it, I'd be like, crap, did I give today my best? So it became just a mantra to me. So those are the kind of like basic business level um, soft skills you can kind of align with just anything, right? Those those are in a business sense. Now to, to the hacker part, right? So again, running a community now full of, of hackers. I also run Next Gen Red Team, um, which is a curated, um, very curated discord for people who are specifically already offensive, who are already pen testers and want to grow. So we usually just do a little bit of technical stuff in there, but we have had conversations again about these soft skills. And one of the things that um, I noticed for soft skills that that basic hacker soft skills uh, is still customer service. Ultimately, when you are a customer facing role, which every pen tester should be, every operations analyst should be, every blue team or red team or purple team or DevOps, if the client or customer comes to you and ask ridiculous things of you that go against any of your personal work ethics or those things, are you going to do that? No, you need to now have a customer service. Customer service is the ability to curate certain sets of words to a client and or customer. Uh, now, that is a very important basic hacker or, or a cybersecurity capability um, uh, soft skill there. Uh, it literally means being able to service your customer, right? Customer service, service the customer. Um, along with that, again, you've got, um, in the, in this case, report writing custom part of, part of I, uh, operations, no matter what team you're on, you gotta be able to write reports and I suck at it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fair. Uh, I failed 10th grade English one and a half times. <laughs> I had to take it in summer school as a, uh, almost as a senior, like I was going into my senior year and had to take 10th grade English second quarter again because i'm terrible with reading comprehension and i hit my mic apologize i am terrible with reading comprehension and what does reading comprehension mean i can read it comprehend what it says but then this this writing thing then they start talking about well reading comprehension also encompasses this thing called grammar and grammar um is the most foreign thing to me i still write like i speak and i it has taken me so much effort to come up with a way to go I need to be articulate, and I, and I love these words, you'll hear me say them a lot, clear and concise, clarity and concision, things that I can say and me, that mean this is what happened, this is the effect. The effect of this caused this. The, this, the, the, the effect of this caused a, 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 insert variable here. A variable here is also what led to the, you know, being able to clearly put those into words is still something I struggle with. 10 years in the industry, 15 years professional experience, high school, taking that course so many times. Writing is tough. Um, I've taken three technical writing courses, one from the university, two online. And still, every once in a while, I catch myself just writing this narrative uh, when, when it comes to so this narrative in non-narrative places. So when you're doing a pen test report or you're doing a report period, people go, oh, well, you wrote this like you speak. I'm like, well, yeah, because it's a narrative. And, and so now I've gotten to the point where I say, hey, this is the narrative. This is what I did. This is how I speak. And then I have to turn around, literally grab that hat and adapt. I'm no longer, you know... Joby blind hacker who is writing this narrative. I did this awesome stuff to your network. I need to now explain to them in clear, concise terms how to resolve these issues. Even when I did operations work early on in my career, I had to go, this is what I saw. This is how I saw it. This is why I saw it. I went looking, I found it, I investigated it. Um, things like that. So, so having that level of basic writing capability to hack your way into a job. So now when you're writing emails, you have to literally be, I'm interested in your job. What job? I have 15 job openings. I'm interested in being a pen tester for you. I'm interested in being a 
operations analyst for you. I want to be your director. I want to be those things. So literally being able to write that down is is extraordinarily important. It 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 you know every single time you grow, every time you adapt, everything that does that, every single hack and and everything else needs good writing. And of course enthusiasm. You could tell by just talking to me. I, I've literally been sitting in places of where like yeah, I've been in the industry a long time and people come talk to me and they're like, they've been in it even longer. They're they're older or they're like, Oh, you know, you're you're such a pup still. You're I'm about to retire and you're this you're this kitten on the field still. And but then they sit down and talk to me and they're like, Man, your enthusiasm, I, my your enthusiasm is infectious. It's literally the ability to it's the, your your mindset. Enthusiasm can be a mindset. Are you happy to go to work every day? Well, nobody's happy to go to work every day. Uh, even brand new jobs, some days you wake up, you're like, oh man, I don't want to go to work today. Same job you've been at for five years, you're like, I don't want to go to work today. But guess what? If you have enthusiasm to do your job, your skills will stay and improve and get better. Even if your job situation doesn't, it's preparing you for the next role, the role you deserve. And that's where, now again, when you write me an email, say, blind, as a director, I want to work for you. I see your enthusiasm. I see your leadership capabilities. I see your clarity and conciseness. I see that you'll come to me and tell me when I'm messing up. I'll see you'll be transparent with me. Um, I see that you're a good leader. Having enthusiasm in your email or in your resume or something somewhere that tells me you want to do this is, is insane. I can see that. Um, I again, reading comprehension. I've done it so many times now, and I've put myself so, through so many workshops. I can detect passivism. I can detect enthusiasm. I can detect those things. So it's things you're going to want to really take as a hacker to go, how can I be enthusiastic about what I do? I really like what I do. How do I show it? Well, I, I can I can write blogs. I can write a good resume. I, resumes suck. Even if you don't have a good resume, show it to me in your blogs, show it to me in your YouTube video, show it to me in your Twitch streams, show it to me in your presentations. Because when you do apply for a job with me, you come in blind, I want to work for you so bad. I'm going to go see, have you done these things? And you know what? It's fine. If you've never talked at a conference before, it's okay. If you've never done those things before, it's okay. All I ask is, hey, I want to see I want to see your enthusiasm. Show it to me in some way. So there's 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 another way to hack your way into a job. Create that YouTube. I don't care if you do the same boxes Ipsec has done. I don't care if you do the same boxes Blind Hackers done. I don't care if you quote my stream. I don't care if you uh, detect pod, uh, the detections podcast. Um, good friends of mine do that. I don't care if you go. Oh, I read the tech. I read detections. I was I listened to the detections podcast, and I went and applied this in my own lab. If you, if I see you taking a piece from one piece of the the place and putting your pieces to it, I go boom. That's enthusiasm. You have now shown me that you have the ability to understand. You have the writing comprehension. You have the reading comprehension. You have interpersonal skills. You're doing teamwork. And whether they're on your physical team or not, I see you grab somebody else's data. You grabbed your data and went. And we overlap here, and now we've got these things. So showing those things is extraordinarily good. Uh, interpersonal skills. You know, I, I this is a this came up when I copy and paste. I was like, what what exactly? I know what interpersonal skills mean to me, but what does it really mean to other people? And got a couple of different definitions. So I'm going to define interpersonal skills as not just the ability to be a team player, not just the ability to one on one and talk with you and engage with you as an individual or engage with um, a group of people. Interpersonal skills also needs to be how you treat yourself. Um, are you going out there going, hey, uh, I'm enthusiastic today. Hey, I'm feeling good today. Hey, you did a good job today. Pat, do pat yourself on the back. You know, um, my teamwork allowed me to be collaborative today more than I was yesterday. My adaptability um grew my ability to write a better statement because i read other people's statements who did reports before me went i like those words i want to use those words but i gotta i can't use the exact same words because they read them last year is there a way that i can or you know, for pen testers I, they read them last year oh god they still haven't changed anything or oh god they have gotten better how do i clearly reflect that with interpersonal capability, with my teamwork capability, my collaboration ability. Remember, red teamers only exist because blue teamers need us. Blue teamers only exist because they're all bad guys. Ultimately, 
it's more than that, but simplifying it, you go, okay, I need to work literally with the bad guy here. Now, don't go knock on their door unless you can find them and knock on their door. But don't go knock on the door like, tell me how you did that. Like, you have to now play in their mind. How did they do this? How can I reverse this? How can I forward this? How can I get better at these SOC, these operations jobs, these engineer jobs, these security analyst jobs? I need to take a look at data and understand it. Take a look at what people did before you. It is very key to find the history to things. Um, uh, and that has been such a tentative part of my job, especially coming to a new organization myself, right? I was with a company prior for almost five years. And I, I, by the end of it, I was miserable. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do anymore. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I honestly thought about quitting and going cooking noodles for a living. Uh, not that cooking noodles for a living is any less or more but stressful, but boy did i just really want to cook noodles um and uh so there there i was at this weird crossroad where crap i'm burned out how do i how do i get my next job i need to leave here so i took <laughs> so i took my ability to to sell i took my ability to be so enthusiastic i took my adaptability and i turned around and said I'm going to do something different this time. For a few of these jobs, I'm going to go interview for them. I'm going to see if I'm the right candidate for them. And I called up a few friends and said, friends, I want to interview. They said, I'll get you the interview. I get on, I interview. It came down every time, I, so many times. Good friends of mine were like, dude, it was so tough. It was you and one other person. And we got to the point, we flipped coins. Four of us flipped coins. It was 50-50. We had to call a random employee, have them flip a coin, and unfortunately, the other guy won out. I'm like, hey, it's fine. Uh, you know what? I hope it works out well. I'm I'm not mad. Hey, you gave me an opportunity. You gave me the chance. Um, I, tr I tried to interview. After a while, I went, I need to put on a new hat. I have this much experience. I can do this and this. I'm no, I'm gonna, I went to my friends, I went to Dead Pixel, and I was like, guys, I don't want just a resume that says I can pen test. I need a resume that says I can change your network. I need a resume that says I can fix and do some badassery on your systems. How secure would you feel after now having someone who, oh yeah, I'm just a pen test versus I can change your network. I can show you the weaknesses in your deep down darkest holes of your network. I can find the bodies. I can bring them up and go, here's this body. We're going to move it. We're going to fix it. We're just going to get rid of it. The, we don't need to deal with this thing anymore. Let's, let's properly get rid of it. Let's properly fix these vulnerabilities. Let's stop these. So I, I, I turned around and I had, uh, I went to my, my friends at dead pixel and I said, guys, I know I do all these resume reviews for people, but I suck at it for myself. I need your help. So I, I literally had a, a good friend of mine, operations lead director, the manager of a, at a company. I said, write, write this for me. Here's, here's, here's my literal three page giant block worded nasty resume because I haven't used it in years. But here's this new template. So I threw out the new template and I threw them together. They got merged. They, boom. Okay. I like this. I like this. This is a little better. This is now me telling you I can find these things. This is now. I can sell this to other people. I can literally go now to LinkedIn. I can go to Twitter. I can go to uh, Discord and go, here's a better way to do it. Stop interviewing. What? Start selling yourself. Well, I'm blind. I don't want an OnlyFans account. Kind of do. You want, you want to stop. Um, you really want to stop interviewing for the positions you really want. Now, I get it when you're new to the industry, it's tough. You got to take all these skills you don't have that I've just thrown at you. But you, again, you can get notoriety by joining places like uh, Discords. You can get notoriety by joining Rocket Chat, Slacks. Uh, you can help people. Be the person when you see an opportunity to help, you help. If you can't help because you don't know enough, go do documentation, go write things, go blog things, go teach people even though you don't know you're teaching them. When you write a blog, you inherently are putting knowledge out there that somebody who thinks like you, who acts like you, who might literally be, you know, your doppelganger from another universe who accidentally crossed over, 
you could literally be helping that person. You putting that knowledge out there allows them to do that. So then you go, okay, now I've got this notoriety. I've got this knowledge out here. I've got these categories. Um, I'm feeling good. I do it too. I, I, I've had to do that even with the level of experience I have. And I went, all right, well, this next job, I'm not going to interview for this job. I'm going to allow them to ask me a few questions and then I'm going to grab the reins. I'm going to, this is a ballsy move. This is a, this is a, this is where I'm really taking now my actual soft skills. What are actual soft skills? Soft skills every human should have. <laughs> Problem solving, communication, analytical style thinking, collaboration thinking. Um, hold on, my notes got <laughs> collaboration. And then um, attention to detail. Those are um, skills, soft skills everyone has um so with those soft skills you got to turn around and go okay i'm gonna i'm gonna use these skills I, those are basic skills everyone should have but now i need to find a way to be clear and concise and overpower their problem solving their thinking i've got to grab the reins of an interview when they have all the power but i can't make it seem like i've just derailed this so you, you you get the few questions in you know they, they finally ask you uh oh well what was your last hack like what was your last incident response like whether it was your uh you know whether it was um real life hack the box uh ctf whatever you did you go now that's them literally going here's some reins come grab them you have to take them and just just reach up one-handed, cool and confident. Reach up second-handed, cool, confident. And go. By the way, here's what I can do for you. I can be a security analyst who's enthusiastic about my job. I can be a security analyst who's going to spend time outside of work thinking about these things. I could be your security engineer who's going to design uh, your security controls. Who's going to design your uh, other tools? I'm going to be the guy who sits down on LinkedIn. I'm going to add your uh, people, I'm going to take these soft skills. I'm going to take these communication. I'm going to write my emails in clarity and conciseness, not just reply. You know, yeah, yeah, dude, I got you, no problem, whatever. Do 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 do. No, turn around and reply. Thank you for waiting. I'm getting on this now. Hey, thank you. I'm I'm going to solve these problems. I'm going to start working on these problems now. I'll let you know when the result. Communicate so if, learn to communicate effectively in your emails, in your LinkedIn, uh, in the communication with me, show me the enthusiasm, uh, go to your, uh, go to your LinkedIn. Oh, I've only got 12 people. Start finding the recruiter, start finding the groups of people, start adding your peers. Cause by the way, as you build your resume, your peers are going to be the best place for you to grab that data too. Like, Oh, they do, they do what I do, but I like the way they wrote, uh, that pen test line. I like the way they wrote that, uh, engineer line. I like the way that, uh, that this admin, this net, this net ops guy has these words that, that make sense. It's very, I know what he's doing. I could do that. Why, why don't I, why don't I take those words and make them mine and massage them a little bit. Now, now they are mine because I, I took them and made them mine. And now I've, I've massaged them. I've manipulated them. So they are mine. And you do that with the aspects of your career. These, these soft skills, the, the ability to do these littler things and you go okay now i'm feeling better now i'm feeling enthusiastic so so how do i hack my way into a job how do i how do i do that well firstly again you have this thing called a resume you, a lot of people don't do cover letters anymore which is fine i've i've done it very infrequently but you know the benefit of a cover letter um there's a pro and a con of a cover letter right uh, the the pros of it is I see the enthusiasm. You're giving me extra sentences to read. Well, I'll tell you now, as a director, I need your cover letter to be very short, very clear. Very, I don't need a literal letter heading to whom it may concern. Uh, paragraph, 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 paragraph. Why the who, the what, the when, the where? No, no, no. I need a hey Joe. I want to work for you because I've seen your talks, I've seen your enthusiasts, or hey, Joe, your company has a position as a pen tester, as a security operations person, and I see the job here, you know, pace link, and although I'm not qualified enough or I am qualified enough, I have these additional skills that I think will make me an, a valuable asset. Please see my resume for the rest of my skills. Thank you for the opportunity. 
oh, that was short, sweet. I can, what's this resume say? Okay, I can see they want to do this job. I see the enthusiasm. I see that they can do these things. I'm going to interview you. I'm going to talk to you. Now, during the interview, you got to sit down and say, hey, I know I might not be as qualified as some of these other candidates, or I might be overqualified. Uh, I have 35 years of pen testing experience. Why are you trying to work for me? I don't have that many years. Well, because you do have different skills. You have other skills. You know, uh, I, want, I want to come in and learn from you. Well, I'm going to be like, well, you know, uh, uh, what if I learn from you? You know, and, and keep in mind, learning is always a two-way street. Uh, and, you know, just because I run Dead Pixel uh, as a founder or as this, as this individual contributor or as this team, these things. No, ultimately, again, I'm still a team player. I still want to, I want to know what you have to say because I guarantee you your approaches are always going to be different than mine. Uh, I guarantee you your writing is going to be different than mine. I guarantee you your process is going to be different than mine. So when you get on that interview, you get your resume lined up. I see that you did these things. I see uh, I have a summary telling me what you want to do, why you want to do it. Uh, and I know that's so hard to choose when you're early on in your career. So for those of you early on in your career, oh, man, I get that a lot. I don't know what I want to do yet. Well, I tell you, they know that I wanted to be a director on a red team. Uh, okay. I've, I didn't even know that that was the thing that I could do. But I found a thing I liked. I, I, I liked a little bit of the operation stuff. I liked being on a – my first uh, job was a cyber threat unit. They don't really have those anymore. But that was the original purple team. Um, I had a few guys that we, – we all were responsible for logging. We all were responsible for compliance. We all were responsible for uh, vulnerability scanning. We all were responsible for testing vulnerabilities. We all were responsible for the security onion, the, the logs, and – resolving things and really what it fell to is the newest person on the team had to kind of do all the meh, grunt work i had to go through these things those things move these things re re-engineer hey but by the way i'm an engineer i can redo our nessus so that way it has better uh levels of access oh we've got these let's do this let's go here let's put these up let's get these vms provisioned so i used the engineer brain i built these things i did this and i went whew, they accepted my proposal they let me build it they we did all this awesome you know, cool. Well, turn around, next job comes around. I'm like, you know, uh, sequestration came around. I needed to find another job fast because I was hearing the rumors. Last in, first out. Like, one, one. I was here six months. He's been here four years. He's been here two years. He's been here eight years, six months. Oh, shoot, that's me. So, again, early on in my career, I had to go, how can I tell people that I do like really awesome stuff? I'm going to ask for a letter of recommendation. So I went to the CISO of a government organization and said, hey, you really liked what I did. Can you give me a letter of recommendation? Because I'm hearing the rumors and I know I'm going to be out the door. And I was very clear, concise, and, and I didn't want to butter anybody up. I didn't want to lie. I didn't want to do these things. I said, I just need to know that if I leave here, you actually appreciated my work. But sequestration's coming, and I'm not going to be able to work here much longer. The budget cuts are coming. It's not your choice. He literally handed me the letter of re uh, recommendation. I already had, like, almost like looked like he had it already. And I was like, that's, that's interesting. Well, because of the things I did while I was there, he literally had it. And unfortunately, I was on the chopping block. Turns out that. I was supposed to be cut almost a month sooner, but because I was over-engineering the solution for all these things, I was able to maintain my job there. And then I delivered notice and they said, hey, by the way, we know you just delivered notice. But literally Wednesday next week is the last week of the uh, month, of the quarter actually. And the way we pay bills is the quarterly. Would you mind that being your last day? I was like, oh crap, what do I do? Again, using clarity, clarity, conciseness, and other things. The co company that I got the job with, I called them up and said, can I start a week early? Sure. So Wednesday to Friday, I had off, started that Monday. So you just need to ask for those things, right? So when, you're, when you are negotiating, when you are going out to a company, you actually have a lot more power than you think. Um, you got to take all those soft skills we talked about, and then you got to go, shoot, I'm a hacker. How can I 
I want to abuse them, but I need to misuse them in some cases. Again, how do I sell myself to the next company? And that's, that's the mindset. Now, this many years of experience, I want you guys to adopt as you're looking for jobs or as you're looking for to get in the industry, or if you're looking to become a streamer, uh, a blogger, a YouTuber, you have skills that you need to go, how can I use these to get uh, to the point where I'm figuring out my next job? So take those skills. Well, I, you do know what you want to do, by the way. Everybody who says they don't. Oh, there's so many different areas. You got to pick one, uh, especially in cybersecurity. Uh, pick, pick, just pick a direction. Doesn't matter. North, east, south, west. Offensive, defensive. Uh, blue team, purple team, DevOps. Find the direction you're most comfortable with and start going that direction first. If you eventually go, I don't actually like to be a red teamer. Here's a benefit. You can eat the transition to any other job once you know terminology, methodology. Um, terminology, methodology, capability, uh, understanding verbiage, understanding those rudimentary, just basic instincts of a cyber person um, should put you in a position to transition to any other portion in the industry. DFIR, oh, well, a hack happened this way. So I, I, I have incident response capability, SOC capability, and red team capability. Well, that attack happened this way. You take the red team capability, that's the coming down. Oh, well, blue team, I found this, found this, found this, found this. Oh, but why is this here? That that doesn't follow my red team methodology. Oh, okay, well, now I've learned something that there's a different way to do this. So when they came in, the entry point was entirely different than any other way. So I found a new variant, you found these things. And being astute, being understanding, and just being curious. Um, that's actually a soft skill I haven't talked about. Uh, curiosity, right? Boy, is that a tough one. The turning around and interviewing for interviewing people for positions at companies throughout the years being director level. I have found people that come to me and tell me they're these badasses. But when I ask them about certain things like curious, just being curious about things, just they, they tail off or I, I can tell that they like maybe they're just in it for the money, which is fine. This is a great lucrative industry. You can make money here, but you're going to do better. When you also have that curiosity, why did that work? You're going to go home, you're going to look it up, you're going to research it. Now, I'm not saying 24 by 7, which most of us unfortunately end up doing, but uh, it's going to definitely be one of those factors that helps you out uh, long term. So, so now you've got, we've built a resume, we've built your reputation, we've built your notoriety. Well, what are some other clarity, conciseness? We've talked about report writing, we've talked about writing emails. Well, now how do you get the job again? The, the most important thing to getting a job, the resume, getting in front of someone. So other things you could do, LinkedIn, hack LinkedIn. Uh, again, Battleship Academy put out a fantastic course on hacking LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure there's other things out there. Uh, Banjo Crashland, uh, um, Jason Blanchard uh, puts out all these awesome videos of like how to do this, how to do OSINT on the company you want to work for. I have a cat playing with my foot. Dude, hi. Hi. Um, uh, puts out these fantastic, oh, Saint, you're a future employer. Do that. Absolutely. Um, a, it helps your OSINT skills. B, just putting your name in front of people, having them see it in different mediums and different places. I cannot stress how many jobs I've probably gotten just by being the one guy who actually showed up to an interview, dressed up enthusiastic, ready to go, resume sucked. There's no way I should have been a systems engineer for my second job. There's just no way. But I showed up, I was dressed well, I spoke well, I, I tried my best. I really wanted this job. I was young, I was uh, affordable, I was way underpaid. Um, but I came in with this number, I came with these things, and I did a lot of these things. And fortunately, the company and it's this this is a, a thing that your companies need to learn to do to do those things. Oh, they rewarded me. That that was the thing that kept me there. I, I was at their company for a long time. This company I spent the most time with. I left and even went back. And the only reason I ended up leaving the first time was, hey, I've got a CEH, I've got a CISSP, I've got all these stop it. <laughs> um, I have all these things and I want to make this much money now. I'm being told I can make this much money. 
well, we can't do it. We literally can't. The position you're in doesn't allow us to. Do it. So I was like, hey, I'm going to go look for another position. And they said, awesome. We're sorry it's not with us. We just don't have a position for you right now. I got it. Was there for a year and a half. <whistles> right back. I, they finally got positions. They opened up cybersecurity for this company. They called me, said, well, we need someone with like just your, your big brain and go there because I could show them through enthusiasm, OSINT, and getting the job there, showing up, knowing what the, you know, asking the questions to the HR people. So HR, so here's a big, uh, big misunderstood thing. Recruiters are part HR. Their goal is to get you the job. If they like you, if they think you can do the job, they want you to get the job. Most of the time, recruiters are actually paid for bringing people in. So they want you to be the right fit. So uh, turning around and hitting up the recruiter and going, hey, uh, how should I dress for this interview? Totally fine. They'll be like, hey, business casual, full suit. You know, asking those questions, another way to use all your soft skills, all these crazy things we've talked about so far. Literally just asking them, hey, I was just wondering, is this a formal affair? Is this a business affair? Or can I show up in, you know, the khakis and a t-shirt or the khakis and a polo, right? You know, uh, pull the Jake from State Farm all the way to, you know, a Harvey Spencer, if you guys uh, know who that is. Uh, you know, full, you know, $3,000 suit kind of lawyer. <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully you don't ever have to get that kind of interview. But some places, uh, I know that will hire you because you showed up in a three thousand dollar suit because they want those kind of people in the door every day well if you don't want to be the guy showing up into the door every day totally fine dress for the job you want but you can also get dressed for the job you get um so showing up and and understanding asking that recruiter asking that hr person like hey is this the way i show up looking on google uh glass door a couple other places doing that osin on the company going other people said this, 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 okay. Hey, ask other people who worked. Hey, when you interviewed, how did you dress? Uh, asking, but again, the recruiter's response should be, hey, I'm going to show, so I'm going to show up at this time. Is it okay if I'm 15 minutes early? Uh, or, hey, it's 2020. I'm doing this over bloody Zoom. Um, find a quiet, well-lit space, light coming down in front of you, not light to your back. Uh, I did an interview from my kitchen uh, after I first moved in. Uh, and the light behind me, I, I, I tested it in the morning, was great. Sun was over here. Afternoon, crap, the light's behind me. Um, had to quickly readjust, have the light coming in the right way. I know it sounds like this, these are cheesy things, but all of this leads to the quality of your character. My headset seems, it's a decent headset, wireless. Uh, it's a gamer level headset should have a decent mic make sure you have a decent mic if you've got to do it over your phone or earbuds make sure that you know as it's dangling it's the mic isn't facing you so as you're moving it's you know rah, 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 rah. um little, little things right so that that's your now you're on the interview once you make it past the hr person you've got this glowing resume you've oh sent to the company you're in front of them on linkedin you're in front of them on their email um you know don't send them like corny jokes but try to coordinate with them often get your name in front of them often because the recruiter is going to be the one who keeps pushing hey did you guys talk to joe again uh he just hit me up no you guys really should talk to him i, I like joe so recruiters carry that weight um uh, okay cool okay hey joe we, we see you reach back out to the recruiter you're doing great or hey you know what joe the recruiter goes i i spoke to them they weren't interested cool now you can move on um especially if it's one of those jobs you're like oh i really want this job and then the recruiter's like then you can move on. Um, hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. So now you've got the resume, you've got in front of the job, you know, the next things are again, follow up. Not saying every person who's followed up with me, I've hired, but most of the time I get busy as I'm a working director. I, my, my full-time job isn't to run the team. I also am always in the field. I am, doing pen tests too. I am doing security engineering. I am writing code. Um, and while I'm writing code, yes, those things are in the back of my mind, but I need to focus on getting my jobs done because I still am billable. I need to make sure my company is successful, especially working at small startups, uh, smaller companies uh, like I have throughout the last 10 years of my career. Um, 
so when 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 you go cool i want to do that those are things okay so i followed up i did everything right blind i still didn't get a job it's okay it sucks it hurts failure is always an option always and it's okay to fail i'm gonna spend the next few minutes talking about that um i've i've definitely i've definitely failed massively i've failed upward i failed downward um it's okay to fail it really is failure is the best teaching tool i love to fail now um it took me i, I guess somewhere in my 30s to go i was in my 20s and i was like oh yeah failure cool now i would do better but now i go that's that's a that's a learning move that's it's i need to not just be get motivated by failure i need to and not just learn a little bit from failure i need to look at the reason that didn't happen and go how can i do better that's why i said hey i, I was looking for this job this year i said all right I, I didn't get two jobs that i was really interested in with two friends that i would love to work at their company i need to stop interviewing i just need to stop interviewing. i need to start selling me because i have the skill set yeah, cool. 15 years experience. Uh, you can do SD land land stuff. You can bring pen testing to a remote capability. But what can you do? I want to know what you could do. Tell, put, tell me in the interview. You know what? I really love digging down into logs. A lot of people be like, oh, log dig. Uh, I'll use a tool to parse that. I want to know. Hey, you know what? I want to know if you can write the tool to parse it. Can you? I don't I'm, I'm, I might hire you just on that alone. I want to know that you've taken the time to do these weird little nuances that are you. Um, so, so cool. Well, I didn't get the job again blind. That sucks. Reach out to that recruiter. I want you to ask them why. I've had people do that and they go, oh, it's, I was just underqualified. Hey, hey, but you're, now you're, you're playing with your upper ends, playing with your boundaries and failing. It's totally fucking cool, period. Like, if you're like, hey, I'm down here, but I'm up here and I'm, I'm not getting the job, fuck yeah, probably not supposed to. <laughs> I'm down here and I did get the job up here. Oh, even better. You played with your upper limits. You played with your boundaries. Now you've got to succeed. Now you've got to take all these things blind. I, I was playing with my limits and, I, and I, I was here and I got the job here. Or I got the job here. Or I got the job where I'm at. Awesome. Now that you've got the job, all these soft skills we've talked about, I want you to um, grab them and go, cool, I succeeded. Pat yourself on the back. All right, how do I keep the job? How do I take these soft skills and be clear, concise, articulate, smart, enthusiastic? How do I get on a call with a client or customer every day and serve their needs? Well, that's those are things that you should be doing because you have those soft skills now. We've we've built this entire last uh, 50 minutes now over helping you think about these soft skills. Google the soft skills. Come to me. Let's talk about the soft skills. I'll do mock interviews with you. That's the most important thing you can do, especially if you are. I'm here, but I want to play here, 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 or here. Um, you've got to take the skills you've got, refine them. Juice them, ferment them, drink it, get better, refine it again, juice it, drink it, ferment, juice it. And it's going to be this constant process. Even 15 years in the industry, like I said, this year, I said I wanted a new job. And I didn't just get it handed. I, I, I went through a lot of companies. I, I'm glad I was provided the opportunity to apply at some of these companies because I've got the user experience because I've got the notoriety because I have a name. There's no reason that these companies should offer me a job, really. Uh, but they did because I worked hard because I did this soft skills hacking thing myself. So that's why I'm trying to bring it to you guys. Um, got a few more minutes left. Um, I'm going to see uh, if you guys are watching live and you want to drop any questions. Excellent. Now people can hear me. Okay. Uh, first, this one's from Pony Lover. Um, how do you like your noodles? Uh, al dente. <laughs> mm -hmm. Steamy. <laughs> little thick, Usually, but still pliable. 
a little thick, still pliable, but what I actually like to do now, I actually let it soak up more of the water, um, especially uh, dealing with like ramen or Japanese style noodles. Um, I used to love more broth, but now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, so I'm in the I'm in the middle. If there's a little broth left in the bottom in the end, great, but I don't want it swimming unless it is actual like, uh, I say like udon, lower water, ramen, regular like ramen noodles that we usually do here in America, lower water. But now if I order pho or like ramen from a place, I love it swimming. Oh man, now I gotta get ramen for dinner. God damn you. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's see. Oh, there was a bot in here earlier that asked if you want to buy ten thousand followers for five dollars. Actually, f- five dots. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad I banned him. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, Iron Beagle says, ooh, can we get a story time channel on DPS? Story time channel. Sure. I said, well, I mean, we're thinking, and nobody has heard me talk this whole this whole conference, but I, I love Blind so much. I'm just going to talk to him. Um, because I, I even said, fail, everybody loves a good fail story. Success stories are boring. Oh, uh, I, I will give you a quick fail story. Very yes, quick. do that. Um, I was on a DHS uh, Tiger team. This was before we called them red teams. Um, Tiger teams were the actual culmination of a multitude of ISSOs, information systems, security officers, people who wrote compliance paperwork, of technical people, of vulnerability scanners, of penetration testers, and of people helping set up boundaries in the government. I was on a DHS out-of-band Tiger team. So I was literally deployed to areas around the U- U.S. and the world. Um, to go, these systems are this. I'm now going. So I get this paperwork from my uh, my systems guys, and they went, "Hey, here's this boundary." I'd go test that boundary, and come back. Well, um, I love doing it so much that uh, another company I was noticing was replacing some of my teammates here and there, and I was like, "So I applied for that company." Um, well, they gave me the job because I was already doing the job. Well, this is a this is a weird up fail story or down fail story. So here here I am. I'm working at one place and I'm like, hey, I went to the new place. They said I was like, I want to make this much, and they're like, cool. Uh, you seem you, we we've heard the feedback from our teammates. You're doing it. So they offer me the job. I go to my company. They're like, hey, but could you like put in one week notice so we can actually deploy on the next one because you guys won't be deployed. I was like, huh. Turns out I get, uh, this was, I, I was gone so many days and back for like, I was literally gone, uh, 16 days back for five, gone for 16, back for five. Um, I turned around and was like in that five days, I was like, no, I can't do that. I'll, I'll give two weeks out properly. So I, I went in Friday, delivered two weeks. Oh boy. So government had a employee there who didn't like some of us that were already on the tiger team. She went to the company that was there, told them that I actually wasn't nearly as good as I thought I was or said I was um just trash talked me they called me up and said hey we actually can't hire you we've been told that we we just can't i'm like first of all you're a private company doing stuff for the government what, what do you mean you can't buy by by whom i knew who it was i couldn't get them to say it so i couldn't go sue people whatever that was a terrible idea but then turn around by the end of the day i had lost both jobs and this was literally one year after my wedding anniversary uh by the end of the day i lost both jobs and no prospects for the future no clue what I was going to do. Um, turn around and was like, I was begging the prior company to hire me. I was begging the other company. Can you guys, can you guys put me anywhere else? Nobody could do it right now. That was their big bread and butter job for both of those people. Um, and the reason it hurt so much was because I made that brash decision to, I was blinded by, I want to keep traveling and then money. And, <laughs> you, and so then, you were blinded by it. <laughs> Uh, but I, but literally, literally, I was like, oh, what well, you guys want to pay me that much more? I I was only making this. These guys, these guys almost want to give me a twenty percent uh, pay raise just to be on their travel team. Yeah, I, I said, yeah, I'll do it without even like, hey, can I? You know, I literally interviewed and they offered me like the interview was like on a Tuesday and they like by the end of that Tuesday, they were offering me the job, right? Like. <laughs> It cascaded so quickly. I should have said, hey, let me take this on. Let me talk to my wife. Let me talk about this. And I didn't. I said, yes, right then and there. And it was a good story of now why I fully listen to my wife, listen to your significant others, people. Uh, they are your partner in these decisions. Um, go from there. <laughs> they, uh, by the end of the day, not having a job, not having any prospects. Uh, like I said, uh, owned a house, just a, a year out of being married. Uh, no, what did I do? 
um the only logical thing i could do uh went and sold drugs no um went back to Ew. old companies <laughs> went back to old companies and this is this is the story i i literally like i said i spent a couple of years at one place uh i left i mentioned that well this was me going i went back to them because of that i was like you know what i don't want to call these guys because i know they'll offer me the job but i need to and so i did and it worked out all right <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? And of course, I got many more fail stories. Uh, again, uh, applying for jobs with friends uh, who I thought was kind of more or less guaranteed. And even this year, and they, they were like, hey, we love you, but, you know, I got good feedback. It literally had nothing to do with the interview. The other person was just that one percent better. It was literally coin flips in some cases. I'm like, hey, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I learned that it's okay to fail. And uh, it's okay to bring down prod on day one of your job. It's okay to do those things. And hopefully you work for a company that's understanding and do those things. It's totally okay to not get a job in finance and then go sell cocaine to the same people because they're in finance and that's what they live on. There you go. Don't do drugs. <laughs> um, I, I don't see any more. There's a lot of, of requests for story time channel and DPS. So, I mean, that might be something you need to get on. All right. So, by the way, if you're not part of DPS, it's discord.gg slash deadpixelsec. Um, come join us. Uh, we will love to have everybody there. The, the more the merrier. Knowledge uh, sharing is our key. All these things, uh, soft skills, hard skills, that's been our uh, kind of bread and butter to help uh, breed a better community. And we, uh, we act locally in Discord and we think globally, how can we uh, return to the community and uh, this is the way we do it. Awesome. I mean, again, I, I haven't butted in this whole time, but uh, DPS, as far as hacker crews go, there are like a, a few that I will always sing praises of 801, uh, of, uh, uh, set KC, and, and DPS. So hit their Appreciate Discord. It, They're awesome. But uh, yeah, I don't see any more, but we do have a track one chat QA. So Blind might head over in there if he's not busy. If you have questions yep. for him in there, and Quadling will be up in just a couple of minutes. All right, guys. See Thanks, you. Thanks, homie.